Waffle charts are a popular way to visually display parts to a whole, and they're a good alternative to fellow pastry-based charts like the pie and donut, particularly if you're wanting to display small segments, which often end up as a tiny slither in a pie or a donut chart. However, that doesn't mean you should get carried away with the number of categories you display in waffle charts. I still recommend no more than three. After that, it just becomes too difficult to compare the parts. Now, there are a couple of ways we can build waffle charts in Excel, and in this example, we'll look at conditional formatting individual cells. We'll start with a waffle chart that adds up to 100 or 100% 100 using a 10 by 10 grid of cells. This is also known as a relative waffle chart. The US Senate data I have here works well for this example because there are 100 senators. Of course, it also works well for data that adds up to 100%. Now, each cell in the waffle chart is numbered from 1 through to 100, counting up from the bottom left and working left to right. Now, I have Microsoft 365, so I'm going to use the sort and sequence dynamic array functions to generate the numbers. But if you don't have 365, I'm going to show you an alternate formula in a moment. So equals sort sequence. I want 10 rows, 10 columns. I want to start at one and count up by one. And I'm going to sort it. I'm going to skip the sort index argument, but I want the sort order to be minus one, which is descending. And because I have dynamic arrays, it spills the results to the cells below and to the right. You can see it starts in the bottom left at one and counts up to 100. Now the alternate formula, if you don't have dynamic arrays, is to use columns and rows. So here we're going to start in column one and we're going to go through to column 10. Notice my absolute referencing, plus 10 times rows. And here I want starting at row one through to row 10, minus one, close parentheses. You can see this has returned the same value that I have in the top left cell of my sort and sequence formula. So all I need to do now is copy it down 10 rows and across 10 columns, and I get the same results. So this is the alternate formula if you don't have dynamic arrays. Let me just select those cells and delete that and we'll work with this data set. The next thing I want to do is resize the columns and rows to make each cell a small square. So let's select the columns, right click, column width. The column width is one and the row height is going to be 10. Now you can still see that I have numbers in there. I could hide them with some font formatting or I could just make the font really big and then it can't display it anyway. Next, I'll set all the cells to have a gray fill color and we'll give those cells a border that's white. So I'll just go into more borders. I prefer to do it this way. I want white and I want the outline and inside to be white. And there's my 10 by 10 grid and I'm ready to set the conditional formatting rules. So the first thing to do is select all of the cells and then on the home tab of the ribbon, conditional formatting, new rule, and here I want use a formula to determine which cells to format. So here I want to start with the top left cell. I'm going to remove the absolute referencing by pressing F4 three times. I want to check that this cell value is less than or equal to the Democrats value plus the Republicans value. I need to add Democrats to Republicans because my Republicans series is going to show up second or on top of the Democrats values. So this is the Republicans value. So here I want the fill color to be red. And now all I need to do is repeat that conditional formatting for the Democrats, which are blue. Again, select the first cell remove the absolute referencing, check that it's less than or equal to the Democrats values, set the formatting fill to blue. And then we have a visual representation of how many seats overall are for women and the breakdown of those seats between Democrats and Republicans. Now, if we look at the conditional formatting manager, you can see that the order of the rules is blue is applied first and then red. 
If you don't have your rules in the right order, it's not going to display correctly, but you can easily rearrange them using the up and down arrows in the Conditional Formatting Rules Manager. So I'll click OK. And the last thing I want to do is give my chart a label. Now, because the column widths up here are tiny, I like to use a text box. So we'll go to the Insert tab, Shapes, Text Box. And you just draw in the text box and type in your title. And you can use color coding to help your reader interpret the chart. It also means you don't need to have a legend. Let's remove the border from the text box. So we're going to shape outline, no outline. Now normally you'd have all these workings on another sheet. I've kept them here just so that we can see it in context as I'm building the waffle chart. I'll just move that into place. Absolute waffle charts don't necessarily add up to 100. Instead, each square or dot in the chart represents one unit, with the total number of squares or dots adding up to the total data. For example, there are 435 people who make up the United States House of Representatives, and I want to create a waffle chart that has a segment for each person. So let's go back to the working file for the video. Here I've already sized the column width and row height to suit my needs. Again, I need to number each cell and I can use sort and sequence to do that. Here I want 20 rows and the number of columns could vary based on my data. And one way to calculate that is to use round up to take the total number and divide it by say the same number of rows that you have. Doesn't necessarily mean it will come out as a square. And as you'll see in this case, I want to round it to zero decimal places. And for the sequence, I want to start at one and step by one. Again, we're going to skip the sort index and sort in descending order. So the data has spilled. You can't see the numbers because the font is too big to see in the cells. But if we enlarge them for a moment, you can see I've got 440 numbers and they start at one. Now, obviously I only need 435. So these ones are redundant and we'll hide them with conditional formatting. I'm just going to control Z to undo that so that my numbers are hidden again. Now the rules here are slightly different because remember, I only want to highlight or shade 435 of the cells. So I'm going to use conditional formatting for the gray fill color as well. So again, we want a new rule using a formula. So this is where the first cell, remove the absolute referencing, is less than or equal to a total number. We want to format these cells with a gray fill color with a white border. Click OK and OK. And there I have my 435 segments. Now I can apply the conditional formatting for the red and the blue. Again, we're going to display the Democrats at the bottom and then the Republicans next. So we'll start with Republicans, new rule based on a formula. Again, where this cell, remove the absolute reference, is less than or equal to Democrats plus Republicans. We want the format fill to be red. And let's repeat for the blue remove the absolute referencing is less than or equal to the number of Democrats. We want to format it in blue. Now this example uses the sort and sequence dynamic array functions, but you can also build this using the columns and row functions. So similar to before, we want to start in A1 through to A1 for the first cell. And you can see I haven't made the second reference to A1 absolute. That's important so that when we copy it, it increments correctly. Now I've got 22 columns times rows and again, starting in row one through to a 20 minus one close parentheses. Now let's copy this formula because it's not a dynamic array. It doesn't spill. And if I make the columns wider, you can see the numbers. So there's my 440 values. 
generated using columns and rows. That's for earlier versions of Excel. Now another option we have instead of showing the squares is to show a symbol like a dot. And we can grab one of those from the insert tab symbol. And in the dialog box here, I've got a dot that I've used before. There are other shapes and symbols that you could use. You can scroll through and have a look what's available. I'm going to stick with the dot. So I'll click close. With it selected, control C to copy and then escape because I don't actually want it in that cell. So here I can use an if formula to test if this value is less than or equal to this value, F4 to absolute. If it is, return the dot. Otherwise, return blank. Close my if. So you can see it's returned a dot. Now all I need to do is copy and paste that to the remaining cells. You can see these cells are the values that are greater than 435, so they don't get the dot. And because the dot is essentially a font, I can use the font color to format it in a shade of gray. Now the conditional formatting is slightly more complex, but first let's just resize the column widths back to one. Now what I want to do is copy the formula in here for columns and rows. This formula returns a number. Remember, if I press F9, you can see this cell is value 419. So I want to copy that formula and then select all of my cells that I want to conditionally format. And again, we're going to apply a new rule based on a formula. And here I need to paste in that formula that I copied. That's going to give me the value to compare to check whether it's less than or equal to. So the first format is for red. So we want to check that it's less than or equal to Democrats plus Republicans values. If it is, I want to format the font. Remember the dot is a font and I want it to be red. Click OK and OK. So there we have the Republicans formatted. Let's repeat for the Democrats. Again, equals, paste in the formula, less than or equal to the Democrats figure. And this one, the format font color is blue. And lastly, because my column widths are tiny, I'm going to insert a text box for the chart title. And like before, let's use some color coding to help our readers interpret the chart without the need of a legend. Make this font gray and bold. And then you can resize it. Let's remove the border and the title is the same for both. So just holding down Control and Shift, I'm left clicking and dragging to make a copy of that chart title. In these examples, you'll have noticed that each segment represents a whole number or a whole percentage point. With this technique, it's not possible to show fractions of a percentage point. But in next week's video, I'll demonstrate an alternate way to build waffle charts that get around this limitation. Well, I hope you found this technique useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.